just not something you can do, deal with right here, but if you split that up, notice how we're going to keep it inside the bracket. Do you see why we're going to keep it inside the bracket? Because ultimately our answer is going to get multiplied by 4 over n squared, yes? So we're going we're gonna to have that. We'll have the summation of k, of course k is going from 1 to n, minus the summation of 1 from 1 to n. It's in a bracket. You have to have it. Mine is the same thing. I haven't changed that at all. But now's the good part. Now's the part where you actually get to do some nice stuff. You ready to do some nice stuff with it? We, we, it's time to get rid of all those summations because we don't, we don't like those. Those we have formulas for. You ready to deal with the formulas for those? You sure? Real quick though, how many people feel okay with it, with it so far? Feel just fine with it. So you see where all this stuff is coming from? That's great, that's great, okay. Now, have you memorized or do you know the formula for sum of k? Yeah. And, 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 uh, plus one over two. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all the mumbling hopefully made over, over two. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, I think I heard most of what you said. That's that. That is this. Minus. It's still in a bracket. What's this? We talked about that only one time. It's constant times n. Constant times n, which would be what? N. Just n in this case. Minus. Two, okay, two over n times, how much is this one? N. Yeah, yeah. That's why, by the way, it's in your, in your notation it says sum of c is cn, because you always pull the c out, right? The summation of one is always just n. That's why it's cn. So this is going to be n. I do it that way because it's kind of nice. You can see what's going to happen with that. You still right? Let's keep going. Let's do some fancy math. Uh, easy part, I'll do this one for you. I'll tell you what, the n and the n here, I get to cross those out. Cool, right? Mm -hmm. Done. That's nice. What's going to happen with this whole garbage? Yeah, distribute your n. Probably distribute that. If I distribute that back in there, I needed, to, I needed to factor it out to get my summation notation OK, but now I need to distribute it back in. If we had split this up, we probably wouldn't have to distribute that back in. So it's, it's up to you what you want to do with that. Uh, but notice how if we would have distributed here, split up our fractions, then pulled things out of each individual sum, there would be no need for distribution later. Do you see the difference in that problem? So it's, it's six to one, half dozen to the other. It really doesn't matter what you do. You're going to have to factor and distribute in both cases. So here we'll get, we'll get what? Okay, let me do this a couple of steps because I'm thinking you're you're going too fast for me. How about that? Does that work for you? Yes, no. I haven't, I haven't simplified anything yet except for these two ends. Is that okay? Are you sure? I'm getting nothing. I need more than this, guys. I need yeses or noes. That's the only way I know how to teach. I need mm hmms or mm hmms. Not. Okay, that doesn't work. Do you get it or not? If you don't, that's not a problem. You should let me know. Now, let's simplify some other stuff. Tell me something that simplifies here. Okay, cool. So the 2 and the 4, those simplify. The n and one of those n's simplify. What simplifies here is an n with the square root part of that. So I get 2 n plus 1 over n minus 4 over n minus 2. We're almost done. Almost done. You ready for it? Now, we'll distribute the 2. We'll get 2n plus 2, and I'm also going to break it up.
2n plus 2. And then I split the fraction up. 2n over n plus 2 over n. Yes, no? Just some basic algebra, but I want to make sure you're really solid on this before we go any further. Are you really solid on that? Mm -hmm. What's nice about this, we're going to get, that's going to be 2. Got it. Man, we're almost done. <coughs> Why don't you tell me the next thing I'm going to have up here? Oh, come on. What's the next thing that happens? You see something up here? Two over n over n. And you're positive negative 2 and you're positive 2. Oh, so 2 and negative 2. Oh, I made a mistake. Why did you let me do that? Uh, I was wondering what you were talking about. <laughs> okay. What is this path? Anyway. The 2's are gone. Uh, we have 2n minus 4n. You okay with the 2n minus 4n? Right. Now, what do you do when you have made it down that far? You have step number five. What are you supposed to do now? A limit of the whole darn thing. So, right here we found the sum. We know what that is. Now you take a limit as n goes to infinity of whatever sum you had. We've already worked this part down. We already have it. This part is 2 over n minus 4 over n. I could. I really oh, then you have a negative and then you don't It doesn't really matter. We can, yes, absolutely. Yes, you're right. <laughs> For sure. I just didn't see it. Because I know what the answer is going to be. Are you okay getting that far then? Yes. We have a negative 2 over n, yes? Yes. Now, you take a limit as n goes to what? <laughs> this is very simple. <coughs> when, the, when n goes to infinity, where does that go? Zero. Zero. That's weird. You mean the area is zero? Yes. Yes. Here's what. Your positive area. You need to think about what this is. This was a lot of work for something very, very simple. Honestly, was you see this? If you didn't really picture what this graph is beforehand, you will now. Uh, this says y-intercept negative one. The slope is one, and you're going from zero to two. That's your picture. Yes, <coughs> it's just two triangles. Zero to two. Why did our area go out to zero? Because you're positive the negative. You're positive the negative. This is positive of whatever. This is negative, but it's the same exact value, only negative. In fact, it was two and negative two. You know how I know that? Well, you could. Or look here. This is positive area. This is subtracting area. This below. That's going to give you a zero. These ones go to zero because you're, divide, you're divided by infinity. It goes to zero. Gone. There's totally a simplified version of that. No. <laughs> it's going to be like Never. power rule. Go through all the mess and just go to power rule. Never. Do you understand the reason why this is zero, ladies and gentlemen? Do you see why? The areas are both on the numerator and denominator of your... <clears throat> whatever. Actually, it's not two, is it? It's one times one over... It's one half. I don't know why I got it in two. Uh, but the area here, if you, did the, if you actually did the work, base times height over two, I, I think it said two, I meant one half. Uh, it doesn't quite match up to that, apparently. That's one, that's one. So one times one is one, divided by two, or base times height over two. You get one half above, you get one half below. That's what makes it zero. You okay with it? Yeah. Sounds cool. Shall we do one more? The worst I can think of so far? Yeah. There's worse ones on your homework, I know that. But yes. the, so they can think of so far. Here it is. Maybe you'll get inspiration after you see our homework. <laughs> yeah. You're inspired by like, terrible things. Going to the next, <laughs> next semester's class. <laughs> Every semester will probably be higher, harder. They do. Yeah, they do. Do they really? 
No, not real, not anymore. They used to though. So I kept seeing stupid mistakes. You know, you guys got to be freaking kidding me. I'm gonna punch you more. Ha 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 ha. So make them harder. Harder. I wish I could take this class the first semester. Time. <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> but in high school. You know, there can only be one Highlander. There can only be one. <laughs> there can be only one Highlander. <laughs> I should just say, go, do it, have fun. But we'll do it together, so you can see it. But you need to be a participant. You need, you need to basically be able to tell me what to do, because when you get this on your test, and you will, uh, you'll need to know how to do it, right? And if it makes sense what I'm doing, of course it does. I'm the teacher. I know what I'm doing most of the time. Uh, so it's going to make <laughs> no, I do. It's going to make sense when I do it. But when you go home, you need the practice. That's why when you skip your homework, or you skip pieces of your homework, it kills you. Because you get to the test, you got to realize there's only 10, 12 problems on the test, right? We have like five to six homework assignments, usually. So that's one to two problems on the test that come from your homework. So if you miss a homework, you miss one to two problems. Or at least you haven't practiced them. That's why your grades go down. So you need to practice it, even though it's hard. Practice it. Now we're going to go through every step. I've given you five steps for a reason so that you follow them. Step number one is what? Delta. 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 You all should find it right now. Delta X is refreshingly easy. Always. It's a subtraction over a number. So in our case, you get 1 minus 0 over N. 1 over N. Did you get 1 over N as well? Mm -hmm. OK. What's the next thing that you do? Uh, find C and A. OK, go ahead and do that. We're using right endpoints. Did you find C sub K already? Yes. It should go pretty quick. This is not one of those hard ones either. You plug in a number for A, you plug in nothing for K, you plug in delta X for delta X. Zero. K. One over N. Did you get that too? Mm -hmm. So you got K over, did you get K over N? Mm -hmm. Do you see why right endpoints are kind of nice sometimes to use? Because you don't have the K minus one. You don't have the one minus one half. That's even nastier. So right, I like right endpoints personally. K okay, over N. Satisfied so far? What's the next thing that you do? Functional. Okay, do it. Find the function. I'll give you a minute for that one. 